Welcome to another LHB Last Days update. If you haven't, subscribe to our channel and check out our Facebook group. Just type in Last Arboreans. Today we're going to be taking a look at two women that are uh, popular leaders in the church today. And I, and I use the, the term church or word church very loosely here. Uh, I mean in Christendom, megachurches and so forth. What you're going to see are these two very popular women teach that the body of Christ must come together at all costs. What do I mean by that? They're going to teach, or they are teaching, that we must come together in unity just because someone names the name of Jesus. Of course, there's a problem with this. We cannot be united if a person is believing, trusting, or teaching another Jesus, as outlined in 2 Corinthians chapter 11. We have to be careful of the unity movement. Let's take a li listen to some of these scriptures that only the word of truth can show us about godly division versus this ungodly unity that's being taught. In Romans chapter 16, starting at verse 17, it says, Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses, here's the key phrase, contrary to the doctrine which you have learned and avoid them. For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly, and by good words and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple. Jesus also taught that he came to bring division, not unity at all cost. Remember, there's a difference between unity in the truth and in the spirit. All Christians in heaven and on earth are already united in Christ. We're, we're baptized in the same spirit. We have the same Lord. So we are unified already through Christ, the real Christ, the biblical Christ, okay? Not the Jehovah Witness Christ, not the Mormon Christ, not the Catholic Christ, not the Word of Faith Christ. It has to be the Christ that is also God. Christ that is God and man, 100% God, 100% man. This is the Christ we must be united in. Not in anybody who just says, I believe in Jesus. Well, which Jesus are you talking about? Let's listen to what uh, the real Jesus had to say. We'll turn to Luke chapter 12. And we'll start at verse 51. This is Jesus speaking. Suppose you that I am come to give peace on the earth? I tell you nay, but rather division. And why? For from hereafter, there shall be five in one house divided, three against two and two against three. The father shall be divided against the son and the son against the father, the mother against the daughter and the daughter against the mother, the mother-in-law against the daughter-in-law and the daughter-in-law against the mother-in-law. Why do you think Jesus said he came to bring division? The reason being is there is a true Jesus and there is a false Jesus. Light and darkness cannot abide together. That's automatic division right there. Truth and error, truth and lie cannot abide. That's a division right there, and that's godly division. Let's check out one more passage. This one is in 2 Corinthians. Uh, chapter 6, verse 14. Be you not unequally yoked together with unbelievers? For what fellowship has righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion has light with darkness? And what con concord has Christ with Belial? Or what part has he that believes with an infidel? And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God, as God has said. 
I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them and be you separate. There goes God the division again, says the Lord. And touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and will be a father to you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. So as we can see, Jesus taught godly division, not unity. But Beth Moore and Joyce Meyer, who were both, I'm going to take a look at both of these women right now. They are telling you something totally different. They're teaching that we must come together just because people say they believe in Jesus without testing anything else. Who cares if their doctrine doesn't match what the Bible teaches? Who cares if they teach a little God uh, theory or a prosperity gospel? Who cares about that? Who cares if they talk about a Catholic Jesus who needs and relies upon his mother, Mary, to help him save you and I? And that's not even enough in the Catholic Church because you still have to pay for some of your sins in purgatory, meaning they have just trampled the blood of the true Jesus underfoot. But who cares about all that? Let's just unify together. Let's watch these two women in action. And remember, let's be Bereans and uh, test these two um, she-wolves uh, with the lens of scripture. God bless. Welcome back. I'm talking with Bible teacher Beth Moore about the importance of unity. Well, Beth, we had a good start in the first half of the program talking about how to get along in our families and with our children, and particularly in marriages. But I'd like to take it in a little different direction now and talk about something that I think is a great, tremendous need in the world today. And that is how we can have more unity across the board yes. in the body of Christ. I mean, even unity within a church, because I've been involved in several churches that were full of strife just yes. within that one church. But then even across the board, so many different little beliefs about different things that divide us, and it's just not God's will, and it's shutting down the power of what God wants to do. Yes. What do you say about it? You know, it's so ironic that even the topic of unity, even the topic itself, causes division. <laughs> if you just That's if we even threw out that we were going to talk about unity, there would be people divided on us talking about unity, which is just <laughs> the craziest thing. Because let me tell you, this unity is not the heart of Christ. It is the polar opposite exactly. of what he commanded us, the mandate on us mm -hmm. for the people of God. So there, there's no way to reason in the body of Christ that this is not the will of God. Yeah, it's, it, it's really unbelievable. I was thinking, and I, th I thought this was a really good thought. I've been thinking about this a lot and thinking about teaching a little more. And, you know, it just grieves me that people have so many opinions about things they don't even know anything about. You know, it's like people can have an opinion about me or you, and yet they don't know me at all. Right. They've never asked me a question. Right. They've heard something yeah. that is totally uninformed and then they'll pass that from person to person but I, I was thinking about my relationship with God and I thought you know I seriously doubt that God agrees with me about everything <laughs> but yeah but yet we have a great relationship yes. and so yes. if, if you can just take that and say my goodness how far off am I from being exactly the way God would like me to be and yet he loves us unconditionally yeah, you know, it's like, and I think just to talk about it openly, you come from one kind of background, I come yes. from another. You've been very involved and still are in the Baptist church. And I could have very easily been a Baptist. My aunt was Baptist. I went to many Baptist yes. church services. I just happened to marry a man that was a Lutheran, and so I was involved in the Lutheran church for a long time. And if you would ask me today what I am, you know, I'm not going to tell you any certain denomination because... To be honest, I just love Jesus and I love the Word and, uh, you know, I, b I believe all of it. And I could not sit here right now and tell you that I even know if you and I agree about every little fine point of our doctrines. But I can say that I agree with your spirit. I agree with your heart. I agree yes. with, <laughs> excuse me, I agree with everything that you're teaching and doing in the body of Christ. And it just hurts me that people have to argue yes. and, and hurt the heart of God over things that really just don't make no. any sense. No. And it, it, it's so, the world thinks we're crazy. Yes. It's like if you guys can't get along, why would we want to get involved in yes. it? Yes. 
Yes, the, the, the witness of our disunity out there is, is deplorable. It is deplorable. And I feel exactly the same way. And I, I will tell you that um, even coming out of uh, being raised up very denominationally, uh, which I loved so much, and it's, it's been my home, uh, it's been that, that, um, that grounding for me. But God put on my heart very early, and, and the people that I get to work with, right. even, even uh, the publisher that I get to work with that I d we didn't want something that was denominational. Right. Yeah. We wanted something that that threw down those barriers and threw down those walls. It is too late on the kingdom calendar for all our segmentation. Right. It is too late. It's not going to work. And you're right. It is heartbreaking, and it's insulting. It's insulting to Christ. So it, it's a it is a day for us to come together and say we love the same Jesus. Jesus. Amen. We love the same scriptures. And it may be, you know, for us, there is so much we have in common um, in our pursuit, in our love for the scriptures. But even if we did not have that in common, if we could both say to one another, our salvation is found in Christ alone. Right, exactly. We believe that Christ died and rose again for us to have eternity in heaven right. with the Lord God. If we agreed on how to be saved <laughs> and that Jesus Christ sits at the right hand of God and we will see his face again. Girl, I tell you, that's my sister. Yeah. That's my brother. Amen. And not only that, but, um, you know, I tell you, we don't. We don't have to uh, agree with one another. We can say, I don't, I may not agree with everyone, but I would serve anyone. Mm -hmm. It's got to be that way for us, that we are a people, that we as servants of God, yeah. that if somebody said, well, would, would you serve over there? I can't believe you'd serve. Are you kidding me? Yeah. I would serve anywhere, and I would serve anybody, yeah. even if they did not have anything close to the same right. belief system. I, I want to love people, and I want to, um, I want to show the heart of Christ that comes in the, in the kind of throwing your arms open, embracing of Amen. other people. And you know, I love my husband tremendously, but I, 